Lesson number two. I strongly believe in, in having both a corporate and a personal vision or dream. And originally, I was drawn to this management tool when I was a rookie president and hosted potato chips. I had read Peters and Waterman's bestseller in Search of, Art, of Search of Excellence, and the concept clicked with me. Then Collins and Tishy and Welsh and others just reinforced my enthusiasm for the concept that I tried in three companies. I know that vision and values absolutely worked at Pillsbury, Skydome, and MLSE. In each case, we had a clear vision of what we wanted to be. It was rock solid statement of intent that reinforced and stretched those companies. In each case, we had a few strong core values that directed us on how we were going to deliver on that vision. Accordingly, every strategic decision we made flowed out of our values. For instance, at Pillsbury, our quality's essential value helped us make an important, expensive quality decision on Green Giant Corn one year. At MLSE, our Inspire Our People value caused, to create, caused us to create a learning environment that was high on recognition and communication. This value ultimately helped us create an exceptional place to work. And our motivated employees were very instrumental in dramatically increasing the enterprise value that I talked about. Vision and values worked in all three of those companies because they were always the rules of our game. The way everyone thought, talked, worked every day in every way. In MLSE, our vision was to win. Win on and off the playing field. Again, I strongly believe that vision and values did help us win off the playing field. But I sure can't point to it working on the playing field. Now, some might use that fact to say vision and values don't work. Again, I don't think so at all. Our dedicated to our team's value caused us to build world-class practice facilities, put natural gas in BMO Field, surround the players with the best training and amenities companies could, could buy. No, we didn't win on the playing field because me, the general managers, coaches, and players didn't get the job done. Now, if my corporate success hasn't convinced you of the merits of having a clear vision or a dream, then maybe my own personal story will. When I was going to high school and university, I loved playing basketball. I thought it would be so cool to play in the NBA. But unfortunately, I could not even make the Massey Mustangs high school team. I had a major case of no talent. So one day when I was 20, 20 years old, I wrote in a journal, burlap journal, that a girlfriend gave me. That instead of playing, I wanted to be president of an NBA team. In 1967, I wrote this, there were 12 NBA teams in Canada and there was little talk about coming to Toronto because 20 years previous, the Huskies had played for one year, had a losing record, and left. Over the next 20 year, 29 years, I went about making this dream happen. First, getting a great education at the University of Windsor, getting my ticket punched in marketing, sales, and general management in four consumer product companies, learning about facility management at Skydome, and learning about sports television broadcast and websites at Netstar. Then in November 1996, 29 years after my original journal entry, Alan Slade hired me as president of the Toronto Raptors. So as you can see, based on my corporate and personal experience, I have great reasons to be a big Vision and Values fan.